A skeleton walks into a bar and says, Hey, bartender, I'll have one beer and a mop. Today, I'm going to recap a 2011 action thriller film called Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. IMF agent Trevor Hannaway is killed in Budapest by assassin Sabine Morrow, who takes his file containing Russian nuclear launch codes so she can sell them to a man known only as Cobalt. IMF agent Ethan Hunt has become incarcerated in a Moscow prison. With the help of Jane Carter, Hannaway's handler, and newly promoted field agent Benji Dunn, he makes his escape, bringing with him a fellow prisoner named Bogdan. IMF tasks Hunt to infiltrate the Kremlin to gain more information on Cobalt. During the mission, an insider broadcasts the IMF team about a supposed detonation, thereby alerting the Kremlin police. Hunt's team aborts the mission, just as a bomb destroys much of the Kremlin. Carter and Dunn escape, but Hunt is captured by SVR agent Anatoly Sidorov and charged with destroying the Kremlin. Hunt escapes and meets with the IMF secretary, who is in Moscow with his aide and intelligence analyst, William Brandt. The secretary, who has been severely reprimanded by Russian authorities, tells Hunt that the president had initiated ghost protocol, disavowing IMF, but secretly orders Hunt to continue to pursue Cobalt. Sidorov's forces catch up to Hunt, and the secretary is killed. Hunt escapes along with Brandt, and together they rendezvous with Carter and Dunn, in a secret IMF bunker located in one of the carriages of a just departed freight train. The team consolidate their intelligence. Brandt and Hunt identify Cobalt as Kurt Hendricks, a Swedish-born Russian nuclear strategist who seeks to start a nuclear war between the US and Russia. Hendricks used the Kremlin bombing to cover up his theft of a Russian launch control device and now is planning a trade with Morrow at the Burj Khalifa in Dubai to gain the required launch codes. Hendricks plans to use Leonid Leisker, a cryptographer who has been kidnapped by Hendricks' right-hand man, a mercenary named Wistrom, to authenticate the codes. The IMF contingent decide to intercept the launch codes by faking both meetings, Hunt and Brandt pose as Wistrom, and Leisker to receive the launch codes from Morrow Whilst one floor away, Carter poses as Morrow, passing counterfeit codes to Wistrom and Leisker. After some preparations, including Hunt needing to climb up the outside of the Burj Khalifa to access a server which needs hacking, the IMF team are able to pull off their plan. However, because Leisker can actually authenticate the codes, Hunt is forced to pass him real ones, relying on radioactive isotopes in the paper to track Wistrom afterwards. However, Wistrom gets away. He murders Leisker preemptively. and escapes in a sandstorm, while Hunt is apprehended by Agent Sidorov. And Carter, both to avenge Hannaway's death and in self-defense, slays Morrow, eliminating their only lead. while Ethan attempts to find a new lead by negotiating with the Fog, an arms dealer, with the help of a supportive Bogdan, Carter, and Dunn confront Brandt, who was forced to enter combat during the Burj Khalifa heist and fought with a level of skill unusual for someone who typically stays at headquarters behind a desk. 
Grant confesses that he asked to be removed from field duty. After being assigned to a bodyguard detail and failing to protect the woman in question, Julia Meade. Hunt was then imprisoned after the Serbian criminals, who killed her turned up dead themselves. The fog directs Ethan towards Mumbai, where Hendricks is set to negotiate with Indian billionaire entrepreneur Bridge Nath to gain control of an obsolete Soviet military satellite. The same information is provided by the fog to Sidorov. The IMF team splits up to stop Hendricks. Carter sexually seduces Nath to get the satellite override code, while Hunt, Brandt, and Dunn try to stop Hendricks and Wistrom from using Nath's broadcast station. They are too late as Hendricks has sent the launch codes to a Russian Delta III class nuclear submarine to fire a single missile at San Francisco. and disable the station's computer systems. To prevent the order's cancellation, Carter, Brandt, and Dunn race to get the systems back online to send the override code, during which they engage in a battle of wits with Wistrom, who tries to stop them. While Brandt attempts to get the systems back online, Wistrom tackles Brandt in order to prevent the system from going online. In the ensuing struggle between Wistrom and Brandt, Dunn arrives and shoots Wistrom, killing him. Hunt pursues Hendricks, eventually catching up with him in an automated car park. Hendricks, with the launch device, jumps to his death moments before the missile is set to land. Hunt then uses one of the cars and takes a dangerous fall to use the device. Brent, Dunn, and Carter managed to get the systems back online, and Hunt manages to disable the missile before it strikes. Sidorov, who has followed the IMF from Dubai to Mumbai, arrives and realizes that the IMF is innocent of the Kremlin bombing. The team meets in Seattle after Ethan accepts a new mission from Luther Stickel. Brandt confesses to Ethan about his failure to protect Julia. Ethan, however, reveals that her death and the murder of the Serbians were part of a plot to give her a new identity, and double as a cover story that let him infiltrate the prison to bring out Bogdan. A relieved Brandt happily accepts his mission and becomes an agent once again. Meanwhile, Julia arrives at the harbor. Ethan and Julia gaze at each other, smiling from afar before Ethan departs for his next mission. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy hit the like button, and if you disliked it hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the full movie. Thank you very much for watching.